this presentation we're going to look at how to compute the correlation coefficient. Now specifically what we're going to look at is the Pearson correlation coefficient. There are actually other types of co correlation coefficient as well, which I will deal with separately. Now I have a little data set here, x. There you have it there. Values be around between 98 and about 106. And I have a second data set here, y1. And again, some very similar values. Now I'm going to, first off, present a scatter plot of these two data sets so we can sort of get a sense of the strength of relationship between the two. So here's our scatter plot. Now along the horizontal axis we have x and along the vertical axis we have y1, the first variable. Now let's look at the trend here. If you just follow where my mouse is, the cursor is, that there's sort of be a broad, broadly speaking, there's a positive linear relationship there. So we can sort of overall detect a sort of trend uh, where my, the path where my mouse is going up and down. So we would sort of say this is a positive uh, linear relationship. Now, to compute the correlation coefficient, we're going to use the function car. So cor x and y1. Now, because I we have we found a very reasonably strong positive re uh, linear relationship, I'm expecting the value close to one. Let's say 0.8. There we have it. There, 0.89. So it's actually much stronger than I thought. So that's the Pearson correlation coefficient for the data sets x and y1. Now I'm going to set up a second data set y2, and we're going to compare that with x as well. So x and y2. Now, we have a negative value here. That means we have a negative linear relationship. I'm just going to show you the scatter plot now. And there we have it there. So, in contrast to my the last scatter plot, we have a downward uh, slow uh, trend going from left to right. So we call this a negative linear relationship. Now on the screen there is the code used to create that scatter plot. I'm not going to discuss that right now, uh, but I will deal with that in another presentation. Now lastly I have an, a third data set, y3. I'm going to have a look at this as well. And the correlation coefficient in this case is minus 0.13. So let's have a look at a scatter plot to sort of see what does that mean. Well, here's the scatter plot for x and y3. Now, you can sort of see that there's no discernible trend here at all, uh, in contrast to the other ones, the, the previous two. That we, there's no sort of upward trend from the bottom left to the top right, a positive linear relationship. Neither is there a negative linear relationship where we will get something, uh, a trend from the top left to the bottom right. So we don't really see either here. So that actually, what we're what we would surmise is that there is no relationship here at all, and in fact, the correlation coefficient is very close to zero, and that would make us conclude that really there is no um, linear relationship. Lastly, I'm going to sort of demonstrate how to compute a confidence interval for the correlation coefficient. Now, rather than use the command car, we would actually use a different one, car.test. This is a, a very complex command. for a, It's a formal hypothesis test for correlation coefficients. Now, I'm not going to discuss that in this presentation, other than to say that sometimes you might want to know the 95% confidence interval for um, the correlation coefficient. And that will be is there. So that's our estimate there, minus 0.13, and that's our 95% confidence interval. This gives us a sort of sense of how certain we can be with this data.